Welcome to another edition of Positive Vibes, making positivity and gratitude louder in the podcast world. Hello. Good morning and welcome to another edition of Positive Vibes, making positivity and gratitude louder in a podcast world. And this morning I have a good guest. Uh, who my guest is Noel Cepeda, who I met on uh, one of in the comments on one of Gary Reed's posts on uh, Instagram, and I just met him when I was looking for his guest for my radio show here. And Noel answered the call. And <laughs> good morning, Noel. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing phenomenal, and <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, just to get right to it, I was looking on your uh, Instagram and Facebook uh, profile, bio, whatever, and uh, you know, came to find out you're pretty. You seem pretty amazing. Or you do seem amazing. Uh, aspiring filmmaker, model, writer, fighter, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Belt, hiking, and you live in Albuquerque. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's that's quite a repertoire. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's kind of like a melting pot of different um artistic outlets for everything, like mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. Um. And uh, I guess the first, I'm sorry, you were saying the melting pot, are you talking about Albuquerque? No, I meant just like um, when it comes to all of my hobbies, like they're all oh, okay, just okay. coming together from different um, arenas of life, I guess. Yeah, just, just like a, a wide array of different stuff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, I feel like it's sometimes like you know, I guess, you know, it's like sometimes it feels like we have too much going on. Yeah. You know, all these different areas of life and everything. Um, and so I guess I'll just start out. What types of uh, films have you made and would you like to? So um, I've actually been doing the film program here in New Mexico. And I don't know if you know this, but New Mexico is becoming the second um, most popular state um, to film movies. Like people are calling New Mexico to Mollywood now <laughs> because that's what we're known for is like our New Mexican foods and green chilies and stuff. So um, that's actually becoming popular as people are nicknaming it to Mollywood and um, Netflix moved here. They're putting $1 billion with a B like uh, Mr. White and Breaking Bad would say. Um, into the Netflix productions here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And, you know, I've always been interested in film. I've always been a filmmaker. I would write movies as a kid and um, I would shoot them on my little iPhone at the time. It was like the first iPhone that was ever out. And as soon as like, as soon as I saw, you know, because I was, I grew up with like chalkboards still, but then I would say when I was around like 10 or 11, that's when technology really started to advance. And that's when we got iPhones. And when I discovered the art of a uh, series of photos or videos, I just became obsessed. And um, I've always written stories. So it was almost like I would write the stories and I would find a way to visually tell them. And I would bring the, you know, the neighborhoods together and we would create movies. And they were mostly comedies um, and horror because that's, mostly what I liked. Um, I did a short film recently and it was a horror. I've only been writing horror recently. I don't know if it's because I'm getting inspiration from a pandemic or what, but um, I've mostly been doing horrors. Um, I really like horror, but I, I think I want to try to explore um, how to how to fit in like other genres that normally don't go together just to try to create an, a niche for myself in the industry. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, okay, and then, uh, 
So, so like uh, the horror films, like like what what do you so far like how what have you done? Have you done like right? Just, so like shorter films or like full length? So I haven't done any full length films yet. I've been involved in full length films in other areas but like my own personal projects um i've only done one short film and it was really to just push myself because like you said earlier um it's about like just getting started and getting out of that headspace of well everything i write is dumb and you know just the criticism and the ego just just taking it out of yourself and just really just sitting down and filling the pages with the story and just letting it come out onto paper. So first I'll write the story and it's kind of funny because normally it unravels in my head from the end to the beginning. So I'll start writing a screenplay backwards most of the time. Yeah. And then I'll have a full screenplay. And one short film is probably only going to be like, depending on how long it is, like no more than like, I'd say like seven pages. So I'm writing one right now because I had a project for school where I had to write a screenplay because we were gonna try to, uh, for our midterm and our final, we're gonna shoot two short films. But um, I was a little bit frustrated because uh, we were only allowed to write about um, being outside, which was completely fine. But then I wrote this entire script and it was, I really loved it a lot. And I actually just, um, I finished the storyboard, I finished the shot list, I found a lead actress, I found a UPM. Um, so I'm actually, after, the, after this podcast today, I'm supposed to go over and start talking pre-production, finding locations, all this other stuff. And it's just crazy because it's like two months ago, this movie's just playing in my head. And now I actually have an opportunity to put it out into the world. And I'm excited, I'm excited because I'm, I'm still only like my second semester into school and I'm already learning so much and just, I'm excited to see the process of it. It's kind of like what Gary Vee says, if you don't love the process of it, because the process is pretty, pretty, not pretty, <laughs> um, then if you don't like the process of it, then there's no point in doing it. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's why I choose all of these things that are very, well, one, all of the things that I love, I'm surrounded by men all the time um, because only like 3% of women are in filmmaking and jujitsu and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I feel like everything that I love, um, like filmmaking and jujitsu, it just takes a certain mindset of not having an ego and just doing it and not worrying about if you're good or bad because regardless of you thinking you're good or bad, like. I thought I was really, I thought I was bad because I only trained with men and none of my stuff ever worked. And then the first competition I get, I get an equal match with a female competitor. And I did a collar tie drag, which is basically where you take your hand and you put it behind their neck or a snap down, I meant, sorry. And you snap them down. And of course it never works at my gym. Like I would do that and they would just be like, <laughs> you know, but when I did it in the competition, she went rolling and I was like, what do I do now? <laughs> like, it's just a perspective thing, you know, like you might not be flourishing in this environment, but it's also like a cohesive, um, something that you have to remember is not only are you getting better, but everybody that's in the gym is getting better too. And it's the same with the industry. Not only are you getting better at like filmmaking and learning the process of everything and the industry and how they work but you're all collectively growing, getting better and like trying to make it, you know? And so I feel like because all of them require that, it's just, it's implementing such a discipline in me and I really, really appreciate it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, there, what, what, uh, what Gary B says, following up with the process, it's like, you know, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna take a while. It may take quite a while. Who yeah. knows, but you might as well fall in love with the process because it's like if you don't, you're just going to hate it. And you know, who knows how long this process is going to be for whatever it is. And you're just going to be hating it until it's over. So you might as well just go up. 
Yeah. And there's been so many times where I write a story and I'm like, man, I've been writing this for three hours and I just, this isn't it. Like, I don't know, you know, and then I'll go to jujitsu and it's like these different outlets, like these different arts that I pursue open up my mind. And it's like, I'll do jujitsu and I'll let myself roll and I'll get into the roll, the flow state. And I'm like, after the gym, I'm like, okay, now I'm in a good headspace. I got this idea and that idea. And now I'm going to go home and write. It's like, if I get blocked in one area, I try to go to another one. Like when I feel like, um, you know, when I feel like I'm not determined to train or anything, I'm like, okay, I'm going to start screenplay writing. I'm going to do a photo shoot. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Because another reason why I want to do this is because I want to create things that outlive me in a way that's going to leave a positive mark because that's what we need right now in this world. We need light because there's so much darkness, but the thing that I want people to remember and I want to visually display in my films is that there's always hope and hope always wins and light always wins and like nothing that's going to get you down. It's going to keep you down forever. Like you're always going to be able to get back up. You're always going to keep going and it's only going to make you stronger. And jujitsu is so symbolic for life for me because I've been in so many situations where I was afraid for my life because I could not defend myself. I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't, you know, skilled enough. I wasn't able to do it. And um, I, that's a huge reason why I started joining jujitsu in the first place was I was tired of people telling me no. And I was like, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna go for it because it's like you said, if you don't get started, it's never going to happen. In the moment, it doesn't feel like you're doing anything. You know, I didn't expect to ever get a blue belt ever because I wasn't good. I didn't come from a martial arts background. I played soccer for like 12 years. So it was completely out of my comfort zone. And I just felt I want to grow and I want to live a life that is unlike what I've been living. And I feel like to do that, I need to do things that I've never done. And I, you know, I might not be good, but it was also like, I just have such an amazing community of people to keep me going and to ask me like why I'm not there or if I'm coming to this competition, you know, like it's just nice to feel like you have people that actually genuinely realize you're there and acknowledge your value and what you bring to the table. And like, if it wasn't for the people that were at my gym and them pushing me all the time, because I was the only woman at the gym for like a year and a half. And that was not easy for me because I would get panic attacks just going into the mall, you know, just having so many people around me. So it, it made me better as a person too. It was like, I don't have as much anxiety anymore. And I really don't know if I would have been able to pursue my passion for film if it wasn't for jujitsu, because it, it makes you come to a point where you're like, I was, I woke up at six in the morning and rolled with a guy that's like 250 pounds and he was trying to choke me for like eight minutes. So like, am I really going to be upset about being in traffic or my boss, like rolling his eyes at me? No, <laughs> you know, it's just like, how can you be? <laughs> you're putting yourself in a terrible position. You're simulating death and murder every day. <laughs> Like, what else could possibly go in your way that's going to knock you down, you know? And it's hard, too, when you're going through a really hard time, and then you go to the gym, and you get into this uh, situation, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't breathe. I'm going to get my arm broken. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. But it's like, you have to really just let your thoughts go. And just a lot of times, I like to close my eyes and just let my body go. And it's like, you think that you're in this terrible position, but the way that jujitsu is, everything's connected and there's just chains of submissions everywhere. And when you start seeing them, you can't unsee them. And that's how it allowed me to see av other avenues in my life. It really, it really, I feel like it really launched me as a person into who I was supposed to be because I was so afraid to be myself yeah. after years of just, you know, 